In this video, we will be studying the clotting factors. After watching this video, I will encourage you to watch the second part of this video, which describes the coagulation pathways. I will leave a link to that video in the screen right now and also it will be in the description of this video. Now, as you know, there are 13 clotting factors number 1 to 13, but only actually 12 are there because the factor number 6 is missing and we will discuss that later. So let's get started. Coming to the factor number 1. Factor number 1 is the fibrinogen. And the source of fibrinogen is liver. So all those diseases which affect the functioning of the liver decrease the concentration of fibrinogen in the plasma, which will subsequently affect the coagulation pathways. Now factor number two. Factor number two is the prothrombin. And source of the prothrombin is also the liver. A prothrombin is alpha-2 globulin of plasma concentration approximately 15 mg per deciliter and this is one of the most important plasma proteins which are involved in the coagulation cascade. Prothrombin splits into number of small proteins. Uh, one of the important protein is the thrombin which converts fibrinogen into fibrin. Coming to the factor number 3. Factor number 3 is the thromboplastin or the tissue factor. And source of the factor number 3 are the platelets and the endothelium of the blood vessels. Now this factor is involved in the initiation of the intrinsic pathway. Whenever there is trauma to the blood vessel, the factor number 3 is released which starts the intrinsic pathway of blood coagulation. Factor number 4, now this is the calcium. and Calcium is the most important ion which is involved in the coagulation pathways. It is involved in almost all of the reactions of the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathways. Sparing some of them, uh, calcium is used in almost all of these reactions. Factor number 5. Factor number 5 is also known as the labile factor, also known as the proaccelerin. I forgot to mention the source of the calcium. Now, calcium is derived from the absorption of bone and also from the gastrointestinal tract absorption. Coming to the factor number 5 source, this is derived from the liver and the platelets. Now as factor number 6, this is important uh, thing to remember that factor number 6 is not there in the coagulation factors. Factor number 6 is uh, not present because earlier factor number 5a that is activated factor 5 falls, was known as factor number 6. Now it is designated as 5a, so factor number 6 is unassigned. Coming to the factor number 7. The factor number 7 is the stable factor, also known as the proconvertin, also known as serum prothrombin conversion accelerator. And source of this factor is the liver. Factor number 8. Factor number 8 is the antihemophilic factor A and source of this factor is the endothelium of the blood vessels. The deficiency of factor number 8 results in classic hemophilia. Factor number 9, it is known as the Christmas factor, also known as antihemophilic factor B and source of factor number 9 is the liver. Coming to the factor number 10, one of the most important factors or in coagulation also known as Stewart factor or the Stewart power factor and source of this factor number 10 is the liver. Factor number 11. Factor number 11 is the plasma thromboplastin antecedent and source of this factor is liver. Factor number 12. Factor number 12 is also known as the Higman factor and these factors the 9, the 11 and the 12 are involved exclusively in the intrinsic pathway of the blood coagulation and source of the Higman factor is also the liver. Coming to the factor number 13, factor number 13 is a very important factor and it is known as the fibrin stabilizing factor. 
and what this factor does is basically it stabilizes the fibrin monomers that are formed after the fibrinogen is converted into fibrin because initially after conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin these fibers are not bound strongly so the factor number 13 produces covalent bonds in between them and form the strong fibrin mesh so this was a short description of the coagulation factors after watching this video please watch the second part of the video which describes the coagulation pathways in detail if you find this video informative make sure to hit the like button below and also subscribe to our channel for the further videos